Well, now, I'd love to introduce you to someone who's been coming to our church online for many months now, but who I met for the first time yesterday. Now, she's Nathan's grandma. Her name is Nancy, and she was praying the Lord's Prayer as a child without really knowing what it meant, and she kept asking, what does it mean to know God as our Father? Let's listen to her story. So I'm here with Nancy. Nancy, just tell us who you are. I'm uh, Nathan Hibbs' grandmother. Yeah, and we've just had Nathan and Gypsy's wedding. Yes. And we were chatting, Nancy, or you were telling me a little bit about how... I came to faith. Yes. yes. So tell us that question that, you were, you, that well, le led you to explore. I was in Sunday school and we were saying the Lord's Prayer. And I suddenly wondered, what does it mean? that God is our Father. And so I went in, I was raised by my grandparents and children should be seen and not heard at the table. They were Scottish. Anyway, um, I burst out with this question, does anybody here know what it means that God is our Father? And suddenly one of my uncles said, well, who does she think she is, Miss Spiritual? But I asked everyone, I asked my school teacher, and people would just say, well, it just means God is our Father. And it didn't satisfy me. So I said, um, I said, um, well, it, it must be something personal. And so I, I kept pursuing the question and in the summertime I took my sister's hand and I said, look, I want to find out what it means that God is our Father. So we went to this vacation Bible school in America and walked in the door and I said to the woman who greeted us, I said, my name is Nancy. This is my sister. I want to know what it means. I said, do you know what it means that God is our Father? And she said, well, yes, I do. Would you like me to show you? So she was with the child evangelism, and she took the wordless book and explained to me how God is our Father and why. And it was the answer to my prayer which Psalm 116 says, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. So, and, 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 and the Father, you've known the Father now throughout your life, yes. as you've trusted in the Lord Jesus, and you know he hears your voice and delights yes. in your prayers. And he, yes, yes he listens. He's he there. He's the God who is there. Yes. And he hears Wonder and he Na answers. <laughs> Nancy, thank you so much for okay. sharing that with us. And uh, we wish you well as you go and celebrate now uh, with uh, Nathan and Gypsy. And, thank uh, you. And we'll, we'll see you again virtually on our, our next service. Thank you for the service. <laughs> God bless you, Nancy. Okay. Bye, bye bye. Bye. So let's think about Nancy's question. What does it mean to know God as our Father? We're just going to think about the first four words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven and we'll start with that middle word what does it mean to know god as our father well a father is someone who loves his child that's what it means to be a father you know my children uh, sometimes tell me that there's a better father than me as i'm a good father they say but there's someone who's better and whenever they say that they say it with a smile on their faces because they're talking about god we have a father in heaven. The best father on earth is a father who will love you and care for you from the moment you're born or even before all the way through the time when you're growing up and they'll always look out for you. They'll always do the best thing for you. Well even the best human fathers don't always get it right. Some of you may not even know your dads or they're not around very much or maybe they weren't very nice. Well Whatever our own fathers were like, Jesus says that God is our Father in heaven. And we come into God's family when we put our trust in Jesus, his Son. 
And when we trust Jesus, then we get the God who made the universe and all the stars and us, and who was there at the beginning and will be there at the end and who's in charge of everything, he becomes our dad in heaven. And because he's perfect, it means his love will never fail. He'll never forget to do the right thing or he'll never get grumpy with us because he's more interested in doing something his own way. He'll never turn away from us. He'll always be there for us. If you can imagine what a perfect human dad would be like, well, God is infinitely better than that. He is full of love for us who become his children when we put our trust in Jesus. That's why uh, Jesus came to earth. He came to die on a cross for all the things we've done wrong so we could be welcomed into God's family when we put our trust in him. So Jesus is like our big brother and all the other Christians, everyone else who's put their trust in Jesus, they're our brothers and sisters too. That's why church is so important because it's God's family and why we're longing for the time when we can all be back together singing our Father's praise gathered in the building. But even when we can't come back to the building yet, in our own homes, we can be a little family of God. And that's why it's great to pray to our Father in heaven. That's what it means to be God, to be our Father. And Jesus taught us that prayer. Think of that first word. He said to pray, our Father in heaven. It's really good to pray to God on your own. But it's even better to pray to God with his other children. And if you live with other people who trust Jesus, then they're your brothers and sisters as well, even if they're your mum and dad, or even if there are some other people you live with. Everyone who trusts Jesus is God's child. And when we pray our Father in heaven, we're praying to the God who's the Father of all those who trust in Jesus. That's why it'd be great if you could pray this prayer that Jesus taught us, maybe when you have a meal together and take some time to pray. If you're not used to praying together, it's a great way to begin. Just say the Lord's Prayer together. Jesus designed it for us to pray with others. He's our Father and he's our Father in heaven. That just doesn't tell you God's address. It's not just where he lives. That tells us that he's all powerful. You see, sometimes our dads can love us, but actually they're not in control really of what's going on. No one is. We're not in control of what's going on in our own lives or in the world around us. But God is. He's completely powerful. He's so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And that's what it means to pray to our Father in heaven. And so we know that when we pray to him, he loves us. and He wants to give us what is right for us. And he can do everything. So when we pray to him, we know that he has the power to answer. That doesn't always mean he gives us what we want when we want it. No, he loves us too much for that. But we can trust him. We can trust him together because he loves us and he's powerful. Our Father in heaven. I'm going to lead us as we pray that now. And I'll encourage you to do that every day. To do it in your family as well as doing it on your own. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I said at the beginning we'd do two songs. Well, I'm not very good at counting. We've had one, but I chose two more for us to finish um, today. The Both of them may be new to you, so just enjoy listening to them. And if you want to learn them, then that'd be a great thing to. Uh, the first one, God's great family, just picks up on some of the themes that we've been thinking about today. And then the second one, uh, God's love is strong love. Uh, that idea of God who loves us, who's our Father in heaven. So, Keep praying and we'll see you soon. God bless you.